studies show that certain foods do help the mind and the body perform better. But, you know, in, the Titans are a lower market. Now, I have friends that are on the Patriots. Is it the same way for them? No. They're, I mean, especially when you have a plant-based quarterback. When you're in their facility, it's going to be a lot of those options. But at the Tennessee Titans, we didn't have that. So that evolved with, uh, involved me just going in the kitchen and just doing what I do. I never thought in a million years I would be cooking for athletes. So I was making Derek things that he liked. I would take sweet potatoes and black beans and make this like meat type so um, concoction and wrap it into um, corn tortillas and make enchiladas and uh, lasagna. I made all of the things that he liked. And I just made a cleaner version of it that's dairy-free and meat-free. I definitely want to dive into the food because now I'm getting hungry. But I, I, I've been on a couple of panels, obviously, with Derek and also with uh, Nimai Delgado. And they both say that the biggest change for them was when they dropped dairy. And then, obviously, Nimai's never had meat, so he just only dropped dairy when he went vegan <clears throat> as a bodybuilder. Um, and we, you know, not too long ago, six Dodgers went dairy free. We've had Brian Turner, the bodybuilder, on um, on our show. The biggest change for him was dairy free. So, getting the meat out is a is a big step. But what have you learned from Derek and the team of why? And I now I'm answering my own question. When I, if he's lactose intolerant, then that was a problem. But for his performance, why do you think that was that the biggest step? The dairy part of his diet, taking it out. Well, you, you, you said those numbers. I mean, you stated those numbers, and what people don't understand is that um, um, the enzymes that we need to break down dairy, we don't have that. We mm -hmm. don't produce that. We're not a calf. Calves have that enzyme in order to break that down in your body to, to store it and do what it has to do to give you energy. Um, and I have to give people that I love history. I really love history. So I give people, especially African Americans, I have to give them a little bit more history that um, Africa didn't have cows be, until colonization happened. Right. So that's why that number of um, African Americans and lactose is so high. Sure. Like you guys, we did not have that in our diet. It's foreign to us. Um, and we're forcing something that never should have been there. And what happens is your body is using all of its energy and everything it needs to be able to fix this. We know that it's not mm -hmm. right. It doesn't belong in our body. So let's fix it. That's what um, our cells do. We go and we run to attack it to fix it. So all, and that's why a lot of, you know, people in our culture and in our community, we, we call it itis. When you get sleepy because your body, um, you, you eat these heavy meals. But I, I found that the common um, statement that a lot of these guys are saying is when they started eating my meals, they stopped getting the itis. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your body's not working overtime to break down all this dairy and all this meat. Now your body is using clean fuel to go out on the field and do what you have to do. I had guys in their 11th year in the NFL, which is already an anomaly in the NFL, 11 years in the NFL, and he literally said, I felt like I was 19 years old on the field when I started eating her meals. Wow. Wow. I'm sure you've had, yeah. What about, what about, um, weight, maintaining weight, which is a big issue, or even I think a lot of football players might want to gain weight. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of pushback about that. Like how can you feed Absolutely. them enough calories? Mm -hmm. Tell us about how you dealt with that. So and I feed the guys like I, I, I get it. I collect data on my guys and uh, you have to understand how your guys eat. Um, when guys would tell me, oh, I'll never eat plant-based. I got to the NFL eating meat, and I'm going to continue to eat meat. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and those are the guys that usually came to me when they seen all of these guys performing so high at a high level when they was camp, and they had to work out and do practices three times a day, and they're working out pretty much from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and they're looking at the guys that are plant-based like they're going to fail. They're going to pass out on the field, and Derek has way more energy than them. That's when those guys were like, okay, can you <laughs> – What's um, going on? 
ask your wife, can I be on? And so the collecting that data looked like this. I would ask them, give me your top three to five meals that you love to eat. And mostly, and that was me trying to figure out, are they heavy eaters? Are they, um, do they like to eat lean? And what are their favorite flavors? Do they like spicy? Do they like Italian, soul food, whatever that is? And what I would do is I would take those meals. I would go veganize them for them. And I'm like, here's your meal. First meal's on me. You don't pay anything. If you don't like it, part ways, I still love you. But, and if you do like it, then, you know, you jump on my meal plan and you do things my way. (laughs) So that happened. And no one guy, not one guy came back to me and said, I don't want to be on your meal plan. Mm -hmm. I got feedback of this is better than I once thought I liked. This is amazing. And it was juicy, really calorie dense meals. If you look on my Instagram, it's not these little tiny bowls. It's like these guys are eating huge portions. They're eating chicken and waffles and, you know, mac and cheese. And I always included some kind of greens, whether it's sauteed as kale or massage kale salad and green smoothies. Um, They got all that. So they never, ever was lacking calories. If yeah. anything, they probably had more than enough. I actually read that one of your one of your players said, um, could you please give me a little less food, please? Because I can't eat all. <laughs> Not that he, he loved it all, but he couldn't eat it all. So. And he's raised in a household where you just don't waste food, which uh-huh. I do understand that as one of six kids. Um, we just didn't waste food. Like mm-hmm. you pass it down to one of your brothers and sisters, but you are not throwing that in the trash can. And he told me that story. He said, yeah, we, I was just raised to where we didn't waste food. We didn't waste food. And this is one of, this is Jarrell Casey, my 300 pound D tackle who's telling me this. And I'm sitting there like, you mean you can't eat a double beyond meat burger? He's like, Charity, please. I, he was like, damn near crying when he said, I need a single, please. I feel so <laughs> horrible. I'm literally wasting it or I'm giving it away to someone like, I need a half. And I was like, okay. Oh my God, what about crazy. when they travel? Uh, what, what, what Do they stay on a, a vegan diet or do you somehow get the food to them? So the good thing with the NFL, it's, it's, they're a turnaround. They're, they're never gone for like 48, more than you know, a day, and they're not weeks on the road like the NBA. So I would always uh, prepare them by sending them a travel meal, and that could be as simple as a buffalo chicken wrap and a lentil salad and a plant-based smoothie, something that they could have and crack open later on. Um, and I would also give them a lot of information. Okay, you guys are traveling to New York. This is plant-based res- uh, restaurants that are around the area. Derek loved postmating because he loved staying in his room. And I kind of did that because I wanted them to feel I'm not micromanaging them. If they wanted to go and eat a piece of meat that day, it was up to them. Because no matter what I said or what I did, they were going to do what they wanted to do anyways. So I just wanted them to feel like I'm not micromanaging them because these are adults. They are adults and they're millionaires, so they can eat whatever they wanted. And so for me to give them that freedom, let them cling on to me closer instead of make them like kind of drifting from me. It's funny how men work, isn't it? (laughs) It's across the board like that, isn't it? (laughs) I read that What the Health was a documentary that had an effect on a lot of the players. Um, Now, of course, it's exciting to hear that the the documentary that y'all are in, Game Changers, is also going to uh, affect a lot a lot of other more players. Um, What was so were most of these um, players going plant based because of performance or because they were recognizing that they weren't aging as healthily as they could? Mm -hmm. Did they have other issues, high cholesterol, high blood pressure? over over fat when you're dealing with guys that are in their 20s i mean i only had two guys that were 30 mm-hmm. mm. um you're, they're not looking at health I'm, I, I have to tell people i i'm dealing with a different kind of guy um that's why i don't i, I don't use the word vegan with them i use plant-based because uh, i'm not here to terrify anyone and 
people are like, oh, so what do you mean? Like, just because I'm eating your meals, I can't wear my Jordans anymore? That's when I would lose people. So I have to tell people, there's it's a fine art to this. You're not only dealing with guys that are 20 years old and they're at the peak of their career, mm -hmm. but they're also overnight millionaires. So you're dealing with that kind of tug of war of, I can eat whatever I want to eat. I can hire whatever chef I want to hire. So for mm -hmm. them, it had to be performance and, and constantly putting it to their self because outside of that, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Hey folks, okay, back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long, does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.